good afternoon good afternoon just about a minute late I apologize we are on the last installment of the book of Daniel Daniel chapter 12 looking at verses 7 through 13 today the final final lesson from the book of Daniel so hopefully everybody's going to have a great holiday weekend. Be praying for that. And hopefully you'll enjoy the summer. Do some fun things. So this is it. Consummation. The final conflict. Daniel chapter 12. Part 2 of 1 through 13. Yesterday we read that Daniel experienced the vision of the resurrection of the dead. The prophecy gave the world the promise that those who believe in the Lord will have their names written in the book of life. Daniel was instructed to close the book, seal it up because God would preserve the message for the end times. And we know from the book of Revelation that the apostle John gets to see the vision of when God opens that book. The end times that the Apostle John was privileged to witness for himself is so filled with excitement and, and the prophecy there teaches us that of course God always wins. Even if the devil may win a skirmish or a battle here and there, in the long run, God's got all this under control. God ties it all together, the Old Testament and the New Testament to help all of us who believe realize the, tr the truth of God and to share the truth of the word. Daniel chapter 12, 7 through 13, Then I heard the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river. When he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever that it shall be for a time, times and a half time. And when the power of the holy people has been completely shattered, all these things will be finished. Although I heard, I did not understand. Then I said, My Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified, made white, and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand but the wise shall understand. And from that, from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. But you go your way until the end, for you shall rest and will arise to your inheritance at the end of the days. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, prepare our hearts as we go through this last portion of the book of Daniel. We thank you for the prophecy. We thank you for the prophecy of the great tribulation that you're offering to Daniel and that, and that you offer to all believers all, all during this time. Father, we pray for hearts that we could reach them with the message of eternal life. Father, let our, let our summer be prosperous. Let us each, as believers, be, be so effective in sharing the gospel that there would be so many new brothers and sisters added to the church. We thank you for all that you give to us in Christ, we pray. Amen. Michael, again, the archangel, in his capacity of service, raises his hands and upon the authority of Christ announces the unfolding of how long-suffering... Oh, I say a four o'clock yawn. How long the suffering will occur on the earth? It will be a three and a half year period that begins midpoint the Great Tribulation when the event when the events that Daniel has foreseen will take place. Talking about three and a half years. That's in the middle of the tribulation. This is when the holy people of God, the Jews, will see the temple desecrated by the Antichrist and their lives will be shattered because they had so anticipated the coming of the Savior. Guess what? He came. Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Anointed One. 
the Messiah, the hope of the people, completely dashed in their minds because the temple will be desecrated. It will seem as though their whole existence was for nothing. But this is only the Lord's way of bringing his people to himself. He is still, even in the tribulation, he'll be drawing people to trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Daniel's revelation is more than he could take, verse 8. And he expresses what many people share after him also. He listens to the Lord and contemplates the message and the meaning. So Daniel makes supplication. He prays to God and he wants to know what all of this prophecy will result in. What does it mean? How does it end is the big question that Daniel has. Because even at this point, Daniel did not understand it. In simple terms, Daniel had heard what he was told, and then he had to know even more. But Michael tells Daniel to depart, not to even think about these things any longer, because there will be a day, time in the future, when fulfillment of all of this will take place. It will be marked by the coming of the Messiah. It's going to be fantastic, and the world will know that the Lord is in the process of accomplishing the great, the great reconciliation of the world. Uh, and every man and woman who will believe, he's going to reconcile back to himself. Anyone will trust in him. And the invitation, honestly, is to every person ever born. From the time that the Antichrist moves to profane God, every believer and the temple of the Lord will mark the midpoint of the Great Tribulation. Right, in, right smack dab in the middle of it all, the Antichrist is going to set up in the temple of God something to desecrate it. The beast will make war with the saints and seek to destroy any influence that God has upon his people. Sacrifices will be made, but, but it won't be a lamb. You know, it's going to be uh, probably something that profanes God, uh, uh, a pig, for instance, because that's not called for by God. The message is for Daniel to go and rest, only to be raised to his eternal inheritance at the end of days. It's a promise for Daniel oh. that he will have eternal life because of his faith in God. Take away from all of this that, that the people of God find purpose in prophecy. We as believers, we should be so interested in prophecy. We should be so moved by the prophetic events that we read about in, in the book, in, in Daniel, and in pretty much all, all, so much in the Old Testament. A lot of the minor prophets have great prophecy in them. Only the people of God can find purpose and meaning in the prophecy of Daniel. Unbelievers will never truly understand it. In this, we are encouraged to study and know the promises of peace that we find through Christ, through our faith in Him. That's when we find perfect peace and rest. As each of us faces the many temporary setbacks of life, we need to have the strength to persevere, to press on, do what God calls us to. That we, we will find in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the only answer. We need to persevere. We truly do. We need to press on because if we as believers don't press on, who's going to hear the gospel? It's up to us. In the final days before Jesus uh, come, comes to offer his life to the world or came to offer his li life to the world on the cross, people were grasping for anything they could to find peace in their hearts. To me, that's a lot like the world we live in today. So many people want to find peace and and, and contentment and fulfillment in anything they can grasp onto except except for Christ. Oh, they'll believe in all kinds of false gods, paganism, Buddhism, uh, all kinds of, of other types of religions. But they don't want to they don't want to place their faith in Jesus Christ. The people then wanted to know if the Lord still cared enough for them and yet turned to other sources for comfort. In that silent time when the prophets were gone, that 400-year period between the Old Testament and the New, New Testament, there were a few good people 
who stood for the principles of God were, remember, the Maccabees, a remnant of believers held to their faith and gave themselves to wholly follow after God. In these days that lead the world toward the inevitable coming of the Great Tribulation, we find ourselves in quite a time similar to just before Jesus came the first time. We see people all around us who place their faith in false promises for a wide, for, from a wide variety of sources, and they never will find peace, not really. The Lord says in Jeremiah 39, 17 and 18, But I will deliver you in that day, says the Lord, and you shall not be driven into the land, hand of the men of whom you are afraid. For I will surely deliver you, and you shall not fall by the sword. But your life shall be as a prize to you, because you have put your trust in me, says the Lord. We are so very blessed to have the indwelling of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, God who dwells in us, who bears us along to do the work that he calls us to do. See, God wouldn't call you to do the work of ministry or sharing the gospel if he wasn't willing to come and bear you along to do that work, to carry you, to inspire you, to give you the strength to do it. The future of your walk with the Lord is what you make of it. It's up to you. It's your responsibility. May we as a body make a commitment with the Lord and to the Lord and each other to bear the light of God's grace as we move forward in his will. Well, that ends the book of Daniel. I pray that it was a blessing. Um, thanks for sticking with me through it. Those of you who have, you persevered till the end. So I pray that that's a blessing. Keep me in prayer. You will see me on Sunday mornings at 1030 streaming uh, services at First Baptist Church. Um, and probably not until the second week in July, I'll start streaming on Sunday evenings around 6. So stay tuned and stay in touch. Um, again, I, I put this out there. If you don't have a home church that you attend regularly and you're in the area, please stop on in and visit with us. Worship with us. Uh, it would be a great blessing if that uh, I would see you there on a Sunday morning. God bless. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you offer to us, for your indwelling, for your strength and your comfort, for the peace that passes understanding. And Father, we lift up to you the many all around us who have not yet trusted in Christ as Savior. Father, we also lift up to you those uh, that we know who have maybe fallen away from you. Oh, they're saved, Lord, and they did love you once, and, and maybe they still do deep down, but there is something that caused them to drift away. So, Father, we lift them up to you, and we thank you that you are a God, a promise of God who won't let any one of his children go. Oh, thank you. And we pray these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless, and have a great rest of your weekend, and I'll see you soon.